Hello and welcome to Async Canvas. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the Blueprint template. With the Blueprint template, you can easily create generative collections from your artwork, allowing your collectors to mint unique one-of-one -one editions from randomized combinations of layers and elements, complete with customizable rarities, types and editions. In this video, you'll learn how to navigate the Blueprint Builder and use the Blueprint Tester understand types and learn how to create them, how to upload artwork to layers, how to adjust the rarity of individual elements, understand how to use the legendary edition feature, and finally, how to enter your collection details and submit your project to ASIC. So with that, let's get started. Once you've selected the blueprint template, you'll be brought to the upload screen. And here at the top, you'll see that there are five stages in the blueprint process. Choose template, which we've just completed, Upload, which is the screen we're on now, Legendary Editions, which allows you to upload unique artwork for particularly rare editions that aren't created from randomized elements like with your main collection. With the Blueprint template, you can even upload video to use for your Legendary Mints, and we'll go into this in more detail a little later. Next are Details, where you can upload a cover image, Enter the information that describes your overall collection, as well as add the custom name for the pieces within that collection. And Submit, which will begin the process of submitting your completed work to Async. On the left side, we have the Back button, and on the right, we have the Next button, which will allow you to move forwards or backwards in the process at any time once each step has been successfully completed. Here on the Upload screen, you'll see the Blueprint Builder, which shows your layers, types, a type counter, a unique combo counter, and an artboard preview on the right with a test blueprint button, which will let you test your piece. Let's go through each of these one by one. If you've used async previously, then you might already be familiar with layers and states, which allow you to upload variations of elements in your pieces, which can then be changed to create new compositions. The blueprint template works in a very similar way However, it adds a powerful feature called types. To explain types, let's have a look through this demo project, which I've already set up by clicking on the test blueprint button. Clicking the test blueprint button opens up the blueprint explorer. Now I'm going to show you how to upload your files and states shortly, but for now it's useful to go through quickly and understand how this piece has been organized. In this example, I've made a very simple piece containing four vertical bars. Each of these bars contains four states or four variations, which are upright, leaning to the left, leaning to the right, and invisible. As a side note, if you would like to make an invisible state and provide an option where nothing displays on your layer, you can do this easily by creating and exporting an empty transparent PNG file with the same pixel dimensions as your chosen template or custom size, then uploading this PNG as one of your states. If you'd like to understand this in more depth, this will be explored along with other tips and tricks in separate videos. Let's go back to the Blueprint Explorer. By clicking on the Randomize button, we can have a look at all the different outputs that our collectors might be able to mint, each of them being a randomly generated unique NFT. At the top here, under Types, you can see we have Async Purple currently selected, which is the type we're currently on, and another called Jet Black. Let's have a look at what happens when we click on Jet Black. Here you'll see I've created an alternate version with a dark background, white bars, and gold elements. If we look back on Types, we can see 50% Async Purple, 50% Jet Black. The numbers mean that a collector will have a 50% chance of minting an async purple type or a 50% chance of minting a jet black output. But what if I wanted to make jet black outputs much more rare? Well, with the blueprint template, it's as easy as changing a number. If we click off the tester, we can see here next to title of type, rarity of type. If we click on this field, we can change it to something rarer. Let's click on Jet Black and change the rarity of type to 5%. This means 
your collectors will have a 5% chance of minting an output type with jet black characteristics. But as you can see here, we've got a warning icon and the text has turned red. The reason is that the overall rarities of all of our types should add up to 100%. Here we have 50% and 5%. So let's try changing our async purple type to 95%. And now you'll see that the warning has disappeared. We have our check marks, which means all conditions for our types have now been met and we're free to continue. As we can see, types are perfect for creating rare items, but you can also use them, for example, creating pieces with different times of day, different locations, views or angles, meaning types can be used as a great way to deliver varied and unique experiences to each of your collectors. Now we're going to learn how to create and upload into our layers. But first, let's talk about the unique combo count. The unique combo count represents the maximum number of additions that can be generated from your blueprint. In other words, this value represents the number of unique combinations or results that can be created based on the number of elements or states contained within your layers. Now this value represents the overall combined number of states you can create from all types in your blueprint. However, just above the layers panel is another unique combos counter, and this one will only show you the number of unique possible combinations for the type you currently have highlighted. Every time layers are added with unique states, the number of possible variations will be recalculated and will display here beside the unique combo count. Let's add a new layer on our async purple type by clicking the add new layer button. You'll notice our new layer says requirements not met. And this is because each layer requires all fields and options to be correctly filled in before a piece can become mintable. So it won't get a purple check mark until those conditions are met. To do that, let's click setup. Clicking on setup brings us to the layer editing screen where we can enter the layer title, change a blending mode, edit state titles, upload files, or change our rarity. On the right hand side is an artboard preview, and again a test blueprint button to quickly preview your artwork. By default, adding a new layer will generate two states, and you'll notice that the unique combo count is automatically recalculated at the top here to include the possibilities of these two states or any further states we might add. Layers can have just one state, all we have to do is delete a state by clicking on the delete icon here. Layers without multiple states don't need to be named, so this is useful for things such as static backgrounds. Since I'm going to need multiple states for this layer, I'm going to add another state by clicking the add another state button. In the layer title, I'm going to call this layer gold confetti. I'm going to keep the blend mode set on normal, but if you need a refresher on blending modes, these will be available in separate videos. Let's add two more states. Notice that each time I add a state, the rarity on the right hand side changes, as all states must add up to a total of 100%. To save time, I've gone ahead and named the states confetti 1, 2 and 3 with a no confetti layer, which will just be a transparent image. To upload an image, simply click the choose file button and navigate to where the image is saved. To save time, I'm going to go ahead and upload the rest. Now that all our images are loaded, let's have a look at them with the test blueprint button. I want these confetti to be a rare and unique trait, so I want most of my additions to mint without the confetti but I still want to have three variations for differences in visual interest. Since they're currently set to a rarity of 25% each, I want to drop them much lower, let's say down to 2% each and 94% for the no confetti state. We could do this easily by closing the Blueprint Explorer, editing our gold confetti layer and editing the state rarities here. I'm going to set a 2% rarity for each of the confetti states and a 94% for the no confetti state. This means that for each of the confetti states, there's a 2% chance of appearing in an addition when an async purple type is minted, but a 94% chance of a mint not having confetti. And with that, we've now covered types, layers, rarities, and uploading.
Now let's scroll up and click on Next to cover the next part of the Blueprint sequence. Legendary editions are pre-composed editions that are guaranteed to be pulled from your Blueprint. You can add up to 10 different legendary editions, and these can even be video files, but remember, legendary editions are meant to be exceedingly rare, so we suggest they are never more than 1% of your maximum edition size. Legendary editions are optional, so let's continue on to details. On the Master Details page, you can enter all necessary details related to your Blueprint project. To save time, I've gone ahead and entered some of the details already. Here under Blueprint Title, is where you would enter the title of your collection. Under Edition Quantity, you can set the maximum number of editions that can be minted from your Blueprint. Firstly, you'll need to make sure that your Blueprint has enough layers, states and variations as per the unique combo counter to create the edition quantity that you need to enter here. Secondly, if you wish to produce edition sizes over 1000, then please contact ASIC Submissions via email. Price per edition is where you will enter the price that each collector will pay to mint an edition from your Blueprint project. This value is given in Ethereum. Next is the Blueprint description, where you can enter a full description of your piece, and on the right you can upload a cover image by clicking on the Choose File here. Think of this as the logo or poster which represents the entire collection to be generated from this Blueprint. Edition title refers to the name that each piece will be given within the collection, and this name will be appended by the unique number of each edition. For example, here I've chosen to call pieces within the collection Compositions. That means the 100th edition will automatically be called Composition Number 100. Please note that this name will refer to all pieces in the collection, regardless of type, so be sure to pick a name that will be relevant for all the pieces in your collection. Lastly, you can pick up to two categories to make finding your project easier on the async website. And with that, we're now ready to go to the final submission stage. The submit page is a final checkpoint to make sure that all details are correct and that your project types, layers, states and descriptions are entered exactly how you want them. Your project is submitted to async first for manual checking and any issues that are found will return your project to edit mode for adjustments before you can resubmit. Master Details will give you basic information about your project information. Primary Sales and Secondary Sales show you a detailed breakdown of your potential earnings and revenue splits. Information on Legendary Editions, where applicable, will be shown here. Blueprint Types will be outlined here, and by clicking each type, you can examine the content of the layers contained within for final checking if necessary. And after that, all that's left is to scroll to the top and click Submit to Async to complete the submission process. And with that, we look forward to seeing your projects created with the Blueprint template. Thank you and enjoy.